Greetings and welcome everyone to ValorTube.com. My name is Paul Lear. I'm an original content provider at ValorTube.com. I'd like to welcome everyone to This Week in Prophecy. And we're going to start off this week uh, in Babylon, Iraq. So give you guys a folks a lay of the land. Modern day Babylon is located south of the capital of Iraq, which would be Baghdad. Roughly... 40, 50 miles or so. Um, and so outlined in the red, this would be the Babylon government. And to zoom in, just to give you guys an idea, ancient Babylon, King Nebuchadnezzar, um, that's there at the Ishtar Gate, which is just north of Hila, uh, Iraq. So this will give you an idea where, where things are, are located uh, that are discussed in the text in throughout scripture and then also where it relates to modern day um cities and this was big news coming out of um iraq this weekend and this is a picture of prime minister of iraq mustafa al Kadimi, and there was a failed assassination attempt he lives inside the green zone and it says a drone struck his house. I've seen some reports indicating up to three drones were fired upon his house. Give you a quick idea. This is again from uh, Al Arabia News. Uh, Prime Minister Mustafa Al Kadimi targeted in a failed assassination attempt. He was unharmed in the attack, and he's been speaking as of this evening, calling for calm. So this was, you know, what would be Sunday night, uh, November 7, here in the United States. They're up and up and going, sun's up, on the 8th over in Iraq, and he's calling for public calm at this point. Um, here's a quote from him. Rockets of treachery will not discourage the believers. The steadfastness and insistence of our heroic security forces will not falter as they work to preserve the security of the people, achieve justice, and enforce the law. And no immediate claim uh, for responsibility has been indicated on this attack. Now, a lot of it has to do, um, there have been protests the last week in and around the... Um, the green zone in Iraq, and I'm going to pull up a map of that, and you guys will get a chance to look at that here in a little bit. Um, Pro-Iran, Hashid al-Sha'abi Shia militia, militia supporters have been camped outside the green zone, and they're upset over election results. And uh, they are protesting and rioting the election results. They didn't win as much as they thought they should have. So... Um, and we'll zoom in. So here is, this is downtown Baghdad and I'll zoom this out. This is from liveviewamap.com. This is open source. Uh, social media just drops stuff. Uh, information, pictures, tweets, videos on the, on the scene journalism, if you will, just people taking pictures with their cell phones and putting stuff out. Um, very interesting. So, so for an example, uh, prime minister's residence has been hit by one of the rockets launched into the green zone in Baghdad. So here's one, I think here's another one down here, just south of this loud explosion followed by heavy gunfire from the direction of the Baghdad fortified green zone where masses of the losing parties, that would be the Iranian supported Shias are protesting and are holding a sit-in, protesting the results. Not much of a sit-in. They're firing live ordnance and uh, burning stuff. Tents were on fire. That's one thing, too. If you guys want to check this out, go to Twitter. You know, just type in Iraq Green Zone bomb, and you will see some very graphic things there. So if you have a weak stomach, don't recommend checking it out. Uh, they have no problem being very graphic, showing people laying in the streets dead shot whatever i mean it's it's raw that's all you can say about it um but just to to pull this out to give you an idea where all this has taken place within baghdad and again 
down here to the south would be what we know as Babylon. Um, and the reason uh, I think it's it's relevant um, is because of Isaiah 13. And this is from the NASB. Um, the pronouncement concerning Babylon, which was Isaiah, the son of Amoz, saw. And I'm going to skip down. God's getting ready to execute some judgment. Sound of an uproar of kingdoms, of nations gathered together. The Lord of armies is mustering the army for battle. They are coming from a distant country, from the farthest horizons, the Lord and the weapons of his indignation to destroy the whole land. And the context is the day of the Lord. And uh, wail for the day of the Lord is near. It will come as destruction from the Almighty. And um, I'll spare all the details there. Behold, the day of the Lord is coming, cruel with fury and burning anger, to make the land a desolation. That'd be Babylon. Stars of heaven and their constellations will not flash light. So for whatever reason, could be a lot of smoke. Sun will be dark when it rises and the moon will not shed its life. And it's, I will punish the world for its evil. It's a global implications. And again, speaks to the, to the end times nature. Make the heavens tremble. The earth will be shaken from its place. Again, some, I don't for surely know what that could mean as far as the heavens trembling. Earth will be shaken. You'd think of earthquakes at that point. But the point of it is, is this place um, will be desolate. Uh, Anyone who is captured will fall by the sword. Their little ones also be dashed to pieces before their eyes. Their houses be plundered and their wives raped. And the whole point is this place is going to be, uh, it will never be inhabited or lived in from generation to generation. Uh, it'll be a desolation. Wild animals are going to live there. Now that's clearly not happening right now. Uh, it's future. Because people have have lived there for millennia, for centuries. And yeah, it's a desert, but um, you still have people there. It will never be inhabited or lived in from generation to generation. And that's the area we're talking about right down here. Um, you know, could that include Baghdad? Possibly. Uh, you know, and that's the thing. This is the... Um, this has been there since golly, you know, Nebuchadnezzar, Daniel. I mean, so we're talking five to 700 years before Christ, you know, 2,700 days ish or 2,700 years from, from, from where we sit right now. Now it's continued to be inhabited and, but scripture, Isaiah says it will never be inhabited again from generation to generation. And the place will be a desolation. It's a desert, but it, it's, it's still inhabited. So I take it this is future uh, with its implications. Um, and so we, you know, we pay attention to this, to, to volatile things. We've had plenty of countries coming in and out of, out of Iraq. The United States has been in and out. ISIS has had a spell there. I mean, the place has been a war zone, um, especially for the early part of the 21st century. And then I'm also going to take you back to the live view map. Uh, and we'll kind of dovetail from here into Ezekiel 38 and 39. And again, this is Iraq. And we're going to go to the northern part of Iraq up here. So just give you an idea just as a key. So in the yellow, uh, you would have um, the the Kurds. Would... would um, the Kurdish people are in this yellow region and then what's controlled by the Iraqi government. Uh, but look, look who's in Northern Iraq. Okay. Turkish military base, Turkish military base, Turkish military base, Turkish military base. All these little blue dots are Turkish military bases. They've come into Iraq and um, they're moving their stuff further south. And why do we care about that? Ezekiel 38, 39, specifically Ezekiel 39. And this, and this speaks to the, 
to the weaponization, the buildup of weapons that's going to take place before Russia and Turkey, Iran, arguably Libya, and the Sudan in the south, maybe Ethiopia. We'll touch on that loosely toward the end of this. But the point is, is there will be a, a significant military build uh, that will come against Israel. So much so that there's this statement made in Ezekiel 39, 9. Uh, then those who inhabit the cities of Israel will go out and make fires with the weapons and burn them, both bucklers and shields, bows and arrows, war clubs and spears. And for seven years, they will make fires of them. They will not take wood from the field or gather firewood from the forests because they will make fires with the weapons. And they will take the spoils of those who plundered them and seize the plunder of those who plundered them, declares the Lord God. So that that group of countries led by Gog of Magog, so that'd be modern day Russia, modern day Turkey, Iran, um, Libya, arguably the Sudan, possibly maybe uh, Ethiopia from the south. Well, there will be a southern arm of the invasion. So you got all these countries with all these weapons, and the pro the proliferation of weapons will be so significant that Israel at that time. When, that, when it fails, we'll use all the weapons for energy sources. Um, they'll make fires with the weapons. That's, that's what Ezekiel says. That's what God says about the, the situation. Now, you know, and, and my point is with all of this is the, the encroachment of military forces from the north continues to come south. And it's already on the Golan Heights border in, in southern uh syria at this time in a little area called cunitra libya i'm sorry not libya but uh turkey continues to move more things further south russia continues to build things and we'll take a look at um, live view map again we're going to take a look at syria and and this week there was a, a massive build up erdogan sent a whole bunch of troops and military hardware equipment jeeps tanks etc into the Idlib or on the border of the Idlib region in what is northern, northwestern um, Syria. And it speaks to that. This is from Al Jazeera. Um, new Syria operation. Turkey faces a Gordian knot. Any Turkish action in areas under Kurdish forces control would likely draw a reaction from Russia, the U S or both. So they have to be careful and they've been in Syria. Turkey's been in Syria since 2016. So going on five years now, uh, and they're going after terrorists. Everybody's going after terrorists and it just depends on who's anybody in opposition to you is considered a terror terrorist right now. So Turkey wants to go after the Kurds. Kurds are considered terrorists. They're trying to get rid of Kurds or terrorists as they see it. Uh, Russia and uh, Syria is trying to get rid of terrorists. That would be ISIS as they see it. Um, but anyway, uh, this is a quote from, uh, I'm not even going to try to say Omer's last name. He's a researcher at the Ankara-based Foundation for Political, Economic, and Social Research. An operation is inevitable, but the timing will depend on diplomacy rather than the military aspects in the area. So, again, they are moving resources into this northern, northwestern area toward Idlib because that's where they want to get rid of terrorism, which includes uh, <laughs> pro-Syrian resources. They can't stand Assad. Erdogan in Turkey would like nothing more for Assad in Syria to be removed from power. But the problem is Vladimir Putin and Russia want to keep uh, Assad in power. And uh, Shia groups led by Iran kind of want to lean toward keeping Assad in power. And so... You know, Iran's got all these proxy groups, mostly Hezbollah down here in Lebanon. So how all this comes together, I still think at some point 
Russia is going to assert itself because it does say Gog of Magog is the leader of uh, Beth the Garma, Tubal, Meshach, which would be modern day Turkey. So at some point they're going to understand, hey, Russia's in charge. Gog is, whoever that Gog may be. Some people think it's Putin. Remains to be seen. But that leader will assert himself and take control of the region and will lead what will be a failed invasion attempt of uh, of Israel. Uh, and, and all this, you can see all these pieces coming together. So again, this is out of Al, Al Jazeera. This is uh, Turkey's safe zone in northern Syria. So, I mean, Turkey has all these troops, all this military hardware in all of these places from and, and Idlib is, is where they're wanting to move into next and, and uh, advance further south into Syria. Uh, so the Turkey forces are here in the green, or the light green. These are the rebels. Anybody who disagrees, they're all rebels. And this is arguably ISIS. I think uh, Russia says... There are rebels or ISIS is in there, and they're wanting to remove them. So this appears to be a little stronghold in between Russia and Turkey fighting over who's going to control it. So what's going on? Uh, Syrian government forces just will have Russia right there next to them. But at any rate, if you look at, um, you know, Turkey's got a good stronghold, getting a good foothold into northern syria we saw that in northern iraq they've got all their bases now to make things really interesting keep your eyes on this little little town up here in north northeast syria called kamishli and guess who dropped some stuff into kamishli um russian ambassador to syria to syria israeli airstrikes undermine security Stability. So Alexander Yefimov claims seem to contradict previous Israeli statements regarding ongoing security coordination and cooperation between Moscow and Jerusalem in the Syrian arena. Um, and so here you have a Russian ambassador to Syria, Alexander Yefimov, on Thursday, harshly criticized the recent string of Israeli airstrikes in Syria, and these were in and around Damascus. And Israel did this during the daytime, which shocked a lot of people. Usually they do it at night, but the airstrikes took place during the day. Apparently there was a convoy of weapons that was um, believed to be um, Hezbollah-related or Iranian proxy-related in Israel took it out. And um, the Russian statement saying is this is that the Israelis are undermining joint Kremlin Damascus efforts to stabilize the country and even pose a threat to civilian air traffic. So, and this seems to be a contradiction because what was it? Putin and uh, Bennett met in Sochi, Russia about a week ago. Bennett had such a great time. He even decided to stay over the Sabbath. Stayed an extra day in Sochi and rested in in Russia at the little resort town. So, looked like things were great, but this guy's saying, hey, y'all need to knock it off. Uh, you're undermining stability. We don't like that. Um, haven't heard Putin speak about it, but you know this guy didn't speak independently. He was <laughs> He was told what to say, <laughs> which, you know, Leads us to this in Russia. This is an Su-35. Um, it's called the Flanker Fighter Jet, and apparently, uh, it made its first uh, made the first visit visit by a Russian combat jet to Kamishli or Kamishli Airport in northeast Syria. We talked about that earlier. <coughs> I got all kinds of tweets confirming this. Uh, Russia, for the first time, deployed fighter jets, four of them, Kamishli Airport, northeast Syria. Again, more pictures of it. This is the same thing we saw uh, at the top. On this is, And this is from the drive. 
That's a publication, the drive.com. And <clears throat> let's see, I don't believe there was a map of this. Yes, there is. I stand corrected. And again, this is where this is taken, where these planes, these four SU 35s have been deployed, Russian SU 35s have been deployed to um, northeast Syria. Now, why does this matter? The United States has troops in this region. Uh, <clears throat> along the Kaber River, down the Euphrates River, arguably somewhere out in this area, U.S. troops are close by. And U.S. military still maintains a presence in northeast Syria, network of forward bases that are used by American and other coalition forces in cooperation with local Kurdish groups. <clears throat> and again, Turkey has a problem with the Kurds. Um... And this would be the area where the Turks have moved in to try to push the Kurds out. The Kurds are all along northern Syria, northern Iraq, and nobody wants the Kurds. They, they originally came from Iran. They got kicked out. Arguably, this is the Medes, would be the ancient Medes, <clears throat> that group of people. So lots of things going on in northern Turkey. But again, the idea is that you have more hardware coming into the theater, moving further south, getting closer to Israel. And we know how it ends, which which takes us to the southern <clears throat> front of this uh, coalition. Rebels are closing in on Ethiopia's capital. Its collapse could bring regional chaos. Um. And so this gives you a picture of what's going on. This is the Tigray region of northern Ethiopia. They're trying to break off, <clears throat> take over Ethiopia. The reason this is somewhat interesting is uh, Sudan is its neighbor. And at some point, Sudan or this area will likely um, turn in... Um, in conjunction with Russia, Turkey, Iran, and come into what would be northern um, Israel. And there's a little bit of interest, too, in, uh, in what's going on in um, Ethiopia because of this. Potential implications. It's a, it's a ways away. Uh, and this would be the Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam. And Isaiah talks about this in his prophecy against Egypt. And that the Nile River does go dry in the end times. Now granted, uh, the Tigray region is up in this area. The capital's down here. But they are, they've are they made it clear these gr this group in the north wants to come down to the capital take control of it and this water and this dam's a big deal because it will be the biggest power plant hydroelectric power plant um, in africa and again isaiah talks about the nile river going dry you can't help but think there may be some sort of implication <clears throat> possibly i don't know but it's worth watching um and the idea of Wars and rumors of wars that Jesus talked about. This popped up out of nowhere. U.S. and South Korea start unannounced aerial war games as tensions rise following Pyongyang's ballistic missile tests. So the chairman, Kim Jong-un, fired off some missiles earlier in this week. <clears throat> so the U.S. and Korea started some war games. Just, yeah, let's do this. Um and that's not so much of a big deal, but but if you look at the recent news, um, and I think this may be something, I could be all wet on this, have no problem admitting this could be very wrong. Um, you, you take a look at what's taking place uh, with arms deals in regards to the United States, the United Kingdom, and Australia. And then Australia's gone up and talked with South Korea. Now we have the United States doing unannounced aerial war games with South Korea. We have, last week, we had India um, 
test firing nuclear weapons from the north of India out into the Bay of Bengal in the Indian Ocean. And, you know, somewhere out there on the horizon is a group of 10 nations that's, you know, Daniel's 10 toes of iron and clay, but it's going to be a global, um, a global empire. This group of 10 has yet to emerge. And the thing that seems to make the most sense, the most sense at this point would be the G7. So it'd be what the United States, Canada, the UK, Germany, Italy, France, and Japan, those seven. And then you throw in Australia, South Korea, and India. It makes political sense from the standpoint of trying to contain China. And, um, and it would also kind of fit the the idea of Daniel's, you know, toes of iron and clay. I mean, this group of people would the only thing they'd have in common is they're they're united against China and trying to block China, control China, and they would have China surrounded, you know, in the east by Japan and South Korea. And the concern is with, with China, they've made it pretty clear they want to go invade Taiwan and bring Taiwan back to the motherland. Um, China would have Australia on its southern flank and then have India on its western, southwestern flank. So, and then you would have the United States and the UK involved <clears throat> effectively trying to surround China, which they're not going to like that. But, and, and there is a group out there right now. It's been brought about in the last, oh, couple years. It's called the D, D as in dog 10, which is the G7 plus these three countries. And a lot of that got started over uh, concern of China's power in and around um, oh, 5G technologies and Huawei, the, the tech giant Huawei that builds all the hardware for 5G services throughout the planet and concerned about what they may have embedded in some of the equipment from a security standpoint and that somebody needs to have some competition for China with, with technology. So paying attention to what happens, any kind of relations between South Korea, India and Australia, which takes us to Australia and their management of COVID. This is over the top. Uh, Australia now threatens threatening citizens with seizure of homes and bank accounts over other COVID violations. Um, Queenslanders who receive fines for breaking COVID-19 rules risk having their homes seized and bank accounts frozen in a government crackdown to collect $5.2 million in repayments. Um, taking it pretty serious. Um, State Penalties Enforcement Register, the ESPER, is now threatening Australia citizens, was undertaking active enforcement on another 18.4% of fines worth a million dollars, which may include garnishing bank accounts or wages, registering charges over property, or suspending driver's licenses. The remaining 25.2% of fines were either under investigation or still open to payment without further action being taken. So big brother down there in Australia, <laughs> they are, they're going to take stuff. You don't comply with COVID regulations. You know, put your mask on, take the jab, or we're going to fine you, take your house, take your bank accounts, take your driver's license. You can't participate in the economy. Um, what, what else did Esper do? Queensland Health took the unusual step of calling in private debt collectors to chase up 5.7 million amounting from 2045 significantly overdue invoices for ho hotel quarantine. Queenslanders rightly expect travelers will pay their hotel quarantine stays and not leave taxpayers to foot the bill. Okay. And the Kiwis just across the ocean there, or across, you know, to the east of Australia. Admit she's created two classes of people. She's the Prime Minister. Prime Minister Ardern admits that she's created two classes of people in the country, the vaccinated 
and the unvaccinated. Okay, there you go. So some of these governments are being very uh, aggressive in their enforcement of COVID-related activities and how they collect fines and so forth. And there's finally this out of the BBC in China. <laughs> China's trying to clean things up. Got the Winter Olympics coming up here in a couple, three months in China. China urges families to store basic supplies in case of emergency. Okay. Somebody tested positive coming out of Disney in China. Stock up on essential supplies in case of emergencies. No reason was given for the notice from the Ministry of Commerce, but it came amid ongoing coronavirus lockdowns and concerns over vegetable supplies after unusually heavy rain damaged crops. This is a great quote. As soon as this news came out, all the old people near me went crazy. Panic buying in the supermarket, (laughs) one user wrote on the Chinese social media site, Weibo. Okay, it's old people's fault. (laughs) They just went crazy. Uh, But nonetheless, they are trying to, the country is continuing to use strict lockdowns to tackle coronavirus. China hopes to reach zero infections before it hosts the Winter Olympics, which begin in February. And again, Shanghai Disneyland. They shut it down for two days. Visitor tested positive for COVID after returning home. So there you have it. There's this week in prophecy. A lot of stuff going on from, you know, ancient Babylon and its implications potentially on Isaiah 13. We'll keep an eye on what happens in and around the Babylonian region. Context is the end times in Isaiah 13. We also have uh, the military hardware buildup continues to move south out of Turkey, out of Russia, into northern Syria. Um, All that stuff's creeping further south. More of it and uh, plenty of military hardware in Syria. Russia appears to be a little upset with Israel continuing to uh, bomb things in and around Damascus. And we'll keep a loose eye on what's happening in Ethiopia. Some people have concerns about that destabilizing the region. And again, that could have some implications in and around Ezekiel 38, 39 with Sudan, Ethiopia, and the southern coalition that will join Russia, Turkey, and Iran, along with Libya, as they go after uh, to invade Israel. So... Again, another busy week. Appreciate you guys watching. Please check out ValorTube.com. I know a lot of people are complaining about censorship out there. Uh, Open internet, uh, social media website. Well, there is no censorship. You have freedom of speech. You should take advantage of that and use that while we still have that ability. So appreciate you guys following along. Uh, Thanks for watching this week in Prophecy, and we'll see you guys next week. Take it easy. Bye.